This is Moments with Foo with James Foo Torres, better known as Foo, the show that takes you around the world to share interviews with some of the most successful and relevant people on the planet, hear their stories, and get the most important business lessons they have learned on their road to success, and get exclusive advice on how to implement their success into your life and business. Moments with Foo is brought to you by the Strategic Advisor Board and your host, Foo. Hello and welcome to Moments with Fu. I'm your host, James Fu Torres, but you can call me Fu. It's the name of the show. And today I have Nick Tinch. He's a real estate yes, investor. He, he goes to uh, communities like where he was raised, kind of like hood and, and, and low income communities and fix up a lot of the houses, fix up even land, create sewage. He does a lot of cool stuff to, to improve. Uh, greatly the areas that that really need that improvement so i'm gonna let him tell you more about that but first nick how are you hey how you doing man thank you so much for having me on your show i really appreciate it please. really appreciate it man thank you yeah uh, uh no 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 worries i mean uh looking forward to to get into this conversation so um yeah let's um let's kick it off with a quick introduction about yourself and your company yeah basically i'm nick tench with tench real estate and construction group uh, we have five business models that I, we talk about that we work out of. We flip, fix and flip houses. We build uh, new houses from the ground up. We clear land. We can clear acreage. We put in sewer and water line. And then we also, too, do custom homes for people. So let's say you, Fu, you'll call me. you say, hey, man, I want you to uh, I want to build a house in Texas or Florida. We'll basically work with you and from the beginning, from the beginning to the end and uh, custom build your house, design it for you. And uh, and go from there. I like that. I like that. Cost still yeah. built. I mean, who doesn't? <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. And, and also, too, we can do it if you're in another country. So let's say if you're in another country and you're looking to build, you know, a house in, in the States or anywhere, we can do it that way as well, too. Yep, yep. So while you're living overseas somewhere, we can build you a custom house in another state here and work with you. Nice. So you are very optimized for remote and really. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah do everything yes, sir. from anywhere in the world yes sir yes sir yep i like that i like that yeah. uh so so let's um let's talk about i i want to do like a quick thing before we start getting into tips and advice i wanted to do uh about like you know there's the interest rates and all this mm -hmm. battle right like, yeah. i want to get a, a little bit of your <laughs> your input on on the mm -hmm. market first and the then market we'll, we'll get yeah. into some value okay all right, man, that's crazy to say it because the market is interesting right now. Uh, rates are a little bit higher than they were, you know, 10 years ago, 15 years ago. Uh, but it's pretty normal due to the economy, the American economy and the global economy, right? So, and uh, most banks have to make money. Uh, it doesn't justify them charging high rates. Now, as a real estate investor, we, we, we are used to, you know, paying high interest rates to, to move money uh, or to borrow money, you know, um, but as a can, you know, you look at it as a consumer, right? Uh, a homeowner, a new young couple looking to buy a house, they can kind of price them out, you know, on uh, things like that. So you just have to be kind of mindful that uh, the rates are going to drop probably maybe to 5.5, 5.7, somewhere around there, maybe in the fives. But I don't think it's going to go below that, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I um, yeah, I agree. I mean, based on what, I, what I'm seeing, I mean the the it's all about offer and demand, like everything. And there's so yep. many people trying to get houses and, and yeah, not many yeah. houses. And that's why a uh, new development is a, is a, is a big thing because I mean, the, I mean, the houses are going up the market pretty fast and then mm -hmm. finding what you want is mm -hmm. difficult. So having somebody that can custom build your house like you mm -hmm. and all that, that, that is something that is extremely, extremely valuable in, in all the, like, being able to develop some areas that like uh, there's a, an abandoned house or mm -hmm. some land that needs to get cleaned up. There's a lot of rats or things like that, right? As mm -hmm. an example yeah. and, and having someone like you to come in and clean up uh, that, uh, mm -hmm. that's uh, something that, that helps a lot. And, and um, on that, on that note, uh, I, I, I want to talk about the, how do you, how do you make sure that you're best serving the community and not, mm -hmm making like making these low income places 
than unaffordable for the low mm -hmm. income people, right? Like I, I kind of want to get your your thoughts on that. That man, that's a good question because with um, areas that I grew up in, you know, and things like that, um, I was, you know, I think the best way to do that is you can only the house can only be valued at so much. So let's say if you find a house for like fifty or sixty thousand, you put a hundred thousand into it, the house can only price so much. So like now you have areas like California, Seattle, uh, those are very expensive markets. So you can't really cap a house. But in the market that I work in, the D.C., the Maryland, Virginia, the, uh, the Florida market, those houses actually can be capped. So that's kind of a safe net, right? Because most, most, let's say young folks, I got nieces that are 27 years old, uh, from 20, you know, from 27 all the way down. So like, she, uh, a lot of young couples will get FHA loans, right? So FHA is only going to approve you for a certain amount. They're not going to allow you to overbuy, if that makes sense. So that right there should actually, some to a certain degree, keep that that neighborhood. Uh, but the comps are going to come back and tell you what what, what they should be. Yeah, um, but then the 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 comps can all go up if you fix fix it uh, enough of the of the houses, and then yeah, the yeah, it goes if up you, if, and all, right? Yeah, if, <laughs> if you if you if you if you fix enough of the houses, definitely the house the house is going to change, but. A lot of times it's not going to go up like the houses, the communities that I work in, they wouldn't go from a $200,000 house to like a $500,000 house. They wouldn't do that. So the communities I work in, they stay in that range of basically the value of it, right? They're, they just, they just need money put into the house. So, uh, but yeah, I don't, I don't work in communities or neighborhoods. I'm not doing it now. I may do it in the future, but I don't have it to where we buy a house for a hundred thousand. Now it's worth a million dollars. You know what I mean? Like, I don't work in communities like that. You know, I, yeah, and I, yeah, that, that just, that'd be crazy to do that. Uh, but no, it's, it's something, well, and some people that do, some people buy a house for maybe 400000 and they sell it for $2 million. You know, there are, there are guys out there that's in this business that do that. I'm not, that's not my business model, you know, very lucrative one, but it's not mine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I just, I wanted, I wanted to, to get, get your thoughts on that because I, I see this yeah. this house is going up so much and new developments mm -hmm. and new stuff and and it just for for my own sake and for the audience too to 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 learn about the all the, like the perspective of somebody that it's has a uh you have the your your hand on the pulse right like or you have the yeah, pulse on, yeah. the, on the on this market right because you're you're in it and I thought it was uh it's good to to kind of bring bring your perspective uh about that so. <laughs> thank you yeah 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 um so, so uh now let's get into some actionable tips or advice given mm -hmm. your expertise so uh, mm -hmm. what what are some some things that you can tell the audience that they can take action right now that mm -hmm. will will help them you know either get their house or get into real estate investing given that that's your expertise I would say uh, Google, <laughs> take as much free courses uh, as you can, uh, partner with somebody, do what's called joint venture deals. So let's say you, Fo, like me and you, you're coming together, you say, okay, you may have the down payment, but I have the experience. So me and you'll come together and do what's called a JV deal, a joint venture deal. We're going to leverage my experience, and then we're going to leverage your money, your capital. And so we're going to end up working together uh, on this deal, this one house. We're going to find a project together. And we're just gonna we're gonna partner with it on it, and then we're gonna split the money even 50, 50, 60, 40, whatever we come up with, right? So that that's a couple of ways you can Google information, uh, you can take free courses, and then you can do what's called you can do um, joint venture deals to where you partner with someone with more experience, and then you can learn from them, right? You know what I mean? Um, so those are those are kind of a couple of ways to, to basically do. It. And then I would say the four would be uh, getting training, paying somebody to coach you. You know, I do coaching as well, too. So I coach people in this space, and uh, I love it. I love coaching. And uh, so, you know, that, that's four, way, four ways right there. You know? Yep. That, that was uh, that was good. I mean, I I, uh, I truly completely believe in joint venture partnerships, you know, your joint oh, yeah. venture deals, uh, doing JV all the way. Uh, I believe mm -hmm. that we're stronger together. And so yeah, we are. Yeah. partnering with people that can complement mm -hmm. your skill sets your resources yeah and, and and come together as a team 
to be able mm-hmm. to be more efficient that's always it's always good as long as you pick the right the right people yeah and and, 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 and yeah and, and everybody well and I, I think that comes with experience and time you know what i mean uh partnership and stuff like that uh i when i when i do a lot that's a lot of things that i'm doing now in the season is joint venture deals i partner with somebody uh but i think also too you know it comes with experience you know learning how you know to read people smoke them over um and it just comes with time. You have to be patient with yourself, um, you know, and be patient with the person too, you know, because uh, it, it's skill sets that you have as a as a commentator, or broadcaster, you know, that I wouldn't even know to be in your space. But I'm like, hey, man, I got like an extra 10, 10 grand sitting around. Like, how can we expand, you know, your media organization? You know what I mean? Like, you know, so but I would have to go off that, you know, and trust that. So uh, but there are so many ways you can partner, man, and do joint venture deals and um, I think that's probably one of the best ways to get into the real estate space or investing space. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree. And, and and to to be honest, I mean, just any space, any space yeah. that you go, this this applies. Uh, if you don't have money for coaching, take advantage of all the mm-hmm. the free stuff out there. Partner yep. with the right people, yep. and, oh, and, and and just learn by doing. Right, like, uh, mm-hmm. getting finding deals. Uh, start presenting deals to other people and see like, Hey, yeah. this is a good deal. This is something. Mm-hmm. Uh, that, those are, those are the things uh, that I, I do. I mean, and there's the marketing side of things too. It's like, well, mm-hmm. like, can I uh, then be good at, at the marketing side of things? Right. There's so many mm-hmm. different areas on every industry, really real estate, especially that there's so many different avenues you can get into real estate. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, I agree. Um, so, um, it, is there any any last one or two takeaways you would like to leave the audience with? Yeah, man. I would say continue to go out, go after your goals. We were talking about it prior to coming on. I always say you're gonna you're gonna hear a hundred no's, a hundred no before you hear maybe one yes. Uh, just because somebody tells you no, that doesn't mean that you're not good at what you want to do or you can't accomplish it. Uh, and I I always say that there's always two good there's always two sides. You got hot and cold. You know what I mean? So there's always good and evil. There's always, you know, something that's going to oppose you from going after your goals. So just, just stay focused on your goals, man. And, and, uh, I have problems in my business, you know, that I deal with daily or weekly, or I just, when we were, before we were on, I, I, I got a call from, uh, one of my guys that some permits came to. We've been waiting for these permits for six months. They were, they were only supposed to take two. So you're going to face challenges in your business, you know, um, look at the challenges and smile uh, and enjoy the small challenges, man, you know, uh, and be thankful that you have them because somebody wants to be where you are. You know, like people love to be, I'm in my truck. This is why I work out of my truck. You know, I got an F450, uh, I got to get uh, my computer in here, my laptop, my printer. Um, I can pull any size equipment I want, <laughs> you know, I got high speed internet. So Somebody would love to have my problems, you know, um, so I just thank God every day. Um, part of my success is my relationship with Jesus Christ, you know, uh, to be honest with you, um, which I'm very, you know, happy about, you know, um, and being a believer, you know, uh, but, it, but being a businessman, you know, I smoke cigars and drink whiskey, you know, <laughs> but I'm a bit. But I'm a Christian businessman, you know, but my, the principles of my business is, is based on my faith, um, you know. I, I, I like that. It seems like every successful person or, or most of successful people I, I met, uh, I've met, they, they talk about God. And, and I yeah, really... man, you need it. And, and, and here's the thing I want to say is regardless of whoever, I got friends of mine that believe differently, totally differently from me. I got friends that are Muslim, that are Catholic, that don't believe, and um, and some that do. Uh, but we but we have so many common grounds, you know what I mean? So, you know, I I I see God through Jesus Christ. Some of my friends see God through another space, and and or through another faith, and that's okay, you know. So, but I think having that, having a faith in your business. And that level of integrity, uh, it helps grow your business, man. It helps sharpen you as a businessman, as a businesswoman, you know. Um, and 
and then because you you end up meeting so many people, you know, you being a commentator in media, I can only imagine the type of people that you run into interviewing and you know, <laughs> like talking to, you know. So, you know, but you know, it's just you you have to have a relationship, you know, with God, man. However you may view the Creator, you know what I mean. However you may view it, you have to have that relationship, you know. So. Yeah, I I I believe in that. Uh, I had, like, probably most people that goes to college, that that like a time that you're like, mm, do I really believe in God? I mean, you yeah, start yeah. learning about science, you start learning about all these yeah. things, and you're like, hmm. Uh, but then, as I as I went into my entrepreneurial journey, mm-hmm. I I needed I needed uh an anchor uh. Uh, something mm. that grounds me, something that I can put my faith and my my trust in that is bigger than <laughs> anything bigger that, than you. that I can think of, you know, bigger than me, bigger than yes, the individual in here. Yes, you know, sir. Yep. Going to the source. Yeah. It's, yep. uh, it's, uh, it's a thing. So I, not a religious person, uh, really. Mm-hmm. I, I do. Okay. I, you know, I was raised Catholic and yeah. I still, you know, I, I believe in Jesus Christ and you know, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm coming up to my own conclusions. Uh, yeah, and, yeah. And just, you know, I, I hear about the, the Bible. I hear from different religions and I get mm-hmm. educated so I can come up with my own conclusions and and accept mm-hmm. certain things as my reality, right? Because I don't think there's like yeah. a, an ultimate reality that it's the, the, the – the reality that it's the true reality or whatever. I don't mm-hmm. believe in that. Yeah. I think that reality yeah. changes depending on the per- on the people and we're spiritual beings having a, a human ex- experience. A human experience. So yep. we don't even have the capacity to understand what mm. that is. We just have what That's we good, can folks. resonate. You know, That's what, good, what, man. <laughs> That's good. That's crazy. That's good. That's good. Because we, we don't. Like when you look at how is the universe even evolving around the sun and existing and staying in, in total submission to where it's been placed? And we are on Earth talking to each other right now <laughs> and not flying everywhere. You know what I mean? Like, you know, like, so you, when you talk about trying to either even understand that level of creation, uh, but having that anchor. Uh, that's how I look at it, man. And and I'm, a, you know, I I graduated high school reading on a second grade reading level. I graduated with ADHD, dyslexia. Um, I graduated with a special diploma. My life has not been easy. I have lived on my own since I've been 16. I mean, I was raised with food stamps, uh, single parent household. Um, my mom's dad and my mom's older brother helped raise me. They were the father figures in my life. Uh, I had my mom, my grandmother, my dad's mom, my mom's mom, and my mom's sister who raised me. I was raised by four women. And um, my dad has 11 kids, you know. Yeah, from six yeah. different women. And I'm saying all that to be yeah, from six years. Yeah. And I'm saying all that to say is like, you know, my life is about, man, no matter where you come from. I mean, like, you know, I end up getting my college degree. You know, I have a little, you know, I have some success. But it, my success and where I've come from is actually a gift. I finally realized it at the age of 44 in my life that everything that I have experienced that what we call success has actually been a gift from God. And how you treat that success is how he replenishes it or give you more. So I have learned to be very humble and grateful, even just talking to you today. You know what I mean? Um, and so, you know, but I, I tell people it's like, you're not going to achieve anything in your life thinking that's going to come to you easy. You're just not, bro. I'm, I'm going to tell you that it's not going to happen. Like get some good friends around you, uh, do as much work as you can, study as much as you can, develop yourself, believe in yourself because people are not going to believe you. I got people now that still question me. I got two patents that I've created, a, u- a utility and a design patent with the U.S. Trademark Office. I've written 12 books. I sit on boards. I've created, you know, success and wealth, and people still doubt me. So I always tell people, so 
who are you that <laughs> they're going to doubt you? <laughs> you're saying, like, you cannot, you, you, and you have to move with pure intentions. You know what I mean? So move with just the, the right heart to help people and want to see other people succeed. So if people, I got friends that are doctors and, and people doubt them. You know, so it doesn't matter. Like, you don't have to be, you know, you can, you can be whatever. I got people that are teachers that, you know, have, you know, I got mentors that are janitors, you know, that, you know, but, and people doubt them. So it, it doesn't matter. You're always going to be doubted. Someone's going to question your ability uh, to achieve and overcome. But if you stay within yourself and focus on that, that character you have and that developing character, man, it's like, like ward off a duck's back. Yeah. I, I, I like to say, um, I love the holistic growth concept, which mm -hmm. starts with the self development. And, yep. and, and that's what I, I tell people all the time is prioritize yourself, develop yourself, take care of yourself physically, mentally, spiritually, yep. make sure you have good relationships around you. You even mentioned that. And, mm -hmm. and once, once you have those things, now you can teach others based on mm -hmm. the experience that you've had. And, and, and that will resonate with people that, that maybe see life similar than you, maybe have similar mm -hmm. values than you. And, and yeah. that's that they like, okay, given that I, we have similar values and you have the mm -hmm. success that I want to have, then yes, I mm -hmm. want to learn from you. And that's when the coaching comes into play. And, mm -hmm. and, and, and that's, that's, that's my, my advice to people. And, and it seems like we're very, very aligned on that. Just take care of yourself oh, yeah. first, then being able to take yeah. of, care of other people and enjoy, enjoy the little things, enjoy the challenges. Because if you have challenges, mm -hmm. that means that you're you, doing something. You're, you're blessed enough to, to have those, those puzzles. I would like to call them that you can solve mm -hmm. because you, you, mm -hmm. you're in that, that position in life that you are able to solve this. And that's why you, you're yeah. getting handed this puzzles, so to speak. Mm. Um, I never looked at it like that as a puzzle, man. Thank you for that. Cause I'm, I'm, fa I'm facing a challenge now, man, to be honest with you with work and stuff. And, but I love it. I, I, I have learned to accept them, accept them and like, okay, how can we as a team work this out? Uh, how can I become better as a leader? Uh, how can I, how can I save money? Right. And how can I not make, make this mistake or, go down this path again. And sometimes I, yeah, you do, you, you end up hitting that path again. But, you know, I like that thing that you said that, you know, it's handed to you as a puzzle for you to figure out. I like that. Yeah. We don't Pretty have cool. problems. We have puzzles. Uh, I, I, like I, that, heard, I like that. I heard that from, from uh, somebody or saw it somewhere in the internet. I was like, nice. This is something that I'm going to be using now. No problems. We yeah. got puzzles that I need to puzzle. solve. And that's yep. it. I like it. That's it. <laughs> I like and it, man. Then, uh, it's been it's been it's been good to to have a conversation with you. Uh, I got me I mean, I think a couple a couple of things that I've been uh, I've been I've been working on, and, and the focus just kind of leave with that to the audience for me has has been to to build a community, a collective mm -hmm. I call it, uh, where where I I believe that the future is is collective. Like uh, we we that's how we moving now that we're so connected. Yeah. Uh, in, in the kind of getting over the, well, the internet is not new anymore. So now, mm -hmm. yeah, now yeah. people are starting to have like healthy boundaries and all that and, and mm -hmm. building community yep. is something that is a, is a big thing right now and then serve mm -hmm. that community. And you talked about mm -hmm. community and how you serve your community in my biggest challenge or my biggest puzzle, right. That I'm, that mm -hmm. I'm solving right now is how do I, identify my people, which I think I'm getting very good at, at that, that part, but then and how to being like a community that also needs to have some paid component. Like maybe like I'm thinking about maybe having like a free component and then a paid component. So I can still like route some value to people that just can't afford it. And that's okay. Uh, but mm -hmm. then have people that are committed to the process paid into that and then develop things, right? Like in your, like if it's, real estate and, and coming in and, and develop doing that and also doing retreats that are transformational for people so that way mm -hmm. they can transform themselves and now be mm -hmm. be something good for the world right like we've, yeah. been, we've been talking about so that's that's my biggest puzzle right now mm -hmm. and you got me to to think about a, a couple a couple of things uh based on that so thank you <laughs> yeah no problem man no problem no problem 
Um, uh, so uh, if, if people are looking to connect with you, how can people find you? Uh, you can find me on um, Instagram. It's nick.t.tinch, T-I-N-C-H. Uh, I'm on TikTok. It's Nick uh, Tinch at Nick Tinch. Uh, Facebook, um, you know, I have uh, websites out there. Uh, I have my books are on Amazon. I have 12 books out there. If you go into Amazon and the uh, search engine on Amazon and put my name, Nick Tinch, I'll pop up. My books pop up. They're like $4.99. You know, I have the training. I have an online training course for ninety nine dollars, and then I coach people one on one. You know, you can reach out to me uh, through social media, me and my team, and I can coach you one on one. But the ultimate goal, man, is generational wealth and education, um, especially for husbands and wives. Uh, I'm big on that family. You know, partners. Um, uh, I think I'm big on that because I think if you as your household understand the value of real estate. Um, and also, too, it, it evens the playing field. Real estate is one of those those careers and side passive income jobs that you can have on the side from your real job that it helps level the playing field um, that you can buy extra stuff. You can do extra things. And that's one thing I enjoy about it. So I don't care if the person is a lawyer, a doctor, engineer, um, you know, the multimillionaire guy. Real estate gives you the knowledge base and the income that can, can that can compete with him. And that's one thing I love about this because it can take the ordinary person, the average Joe Blow, um, and turn him into a mogul, you know, by just doing some of the practices that me and a lot of other real estate investors and content creators are doing, right? Um, so I, that's one of the reasons I love this business, man. It really can help you change, transform your life. And even how you think in business practices and uh, how you do business. You learn so many operational things. You learn about, you know, market trends and neighborhoods and comps and ARVs and, you know, um, you you know, so it, it really helps in all areas of your life um, when it comes to real estate. Yeah, uh, no, I agree. I mean, yeah, even for tax purposes, even for yeah. uh, just like, you know, like generational wealth, all these different things mm -hmm. that, that real estate is something that it's, if, if, if you make money, it just makes sense. So everybody should sense. Yep. look into, <laughs> into real estate first. You can either use it as yep. a job and make money, or mm -hmm. if you want to do something else as a career, then do that mm -hmm. something else and then use it as just investing, partner with people that you can give your money and then yep. you know that they're going to make you more money. Make sure that yep. you are aware of the taxes. So not, not mm -hmm. everybody, uh, it see like accounts and the taxes are very good with that. So I, given that I'm a CMO of, of uh, three companies right now in the in the in the in the accounting space, I'm always big into into the the taxes. So make sure that you are taking oh, really? uh, the tax advantages. Okay. So <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, yeah. That's that's my that's my main gig. Like this is okay, this okay. is a way <laughs> this is a way yeah. to to connect with people, add more more value. Uh, to other business owners and people in general and to, mm -hmm. um, and to then, uh, you know, connect with people, build relationships that will get me eventually either for my community, for mm -hmm. my fractional CMO work with, uh, accountants or, uh, also like just now like the coaching and things that I am mm -hmm. also getting into given my, my experience of achieving what I've achieved so far, which, you know, been three years now, it's about to be three years mm -hmm. since I'm full time doing this. And, uh, mm -hmm you know, doing marketing and, and in the podcast, I've been doing it for two years now. So. Oh, nice. Nice. Awesome. <laughs> but yeah, awesome. Uh, Nick, it was, uh, it was a pleasure to have you here. I'm Man. glad the technology yeah. was in our side and we were able to record. This. Exactly. <laughs> we worked it out, man. Thank you for having me, man. I appreciate it. Uh, like I say, um, you guys can find me on social media, just Google me. And just, I, I would tell, leave people with this, man, just please, 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 like, please keep chasing your goals. Like, Please keep believing in yourself. Uh, please continue to trust that small voice that you don't, you can't explain. You know that people think that you're like, all right, well, you, you know, you like you, you, you see the, the CMM, the CMO, and it's like, ah, well, why are you going to the broadcast? You know what I mean? It's like it's it's that voice and that that feeling that you have that you can't explain to people, and that's what my what what people see now is like. I was told by close members, of family members, that I wasn't a writer or author. You know, I was told that I wasn't a businessman. Um, 
and I wouldn't be here talking to you if I believed what people said and versus what I knew I was or I am. So just continue to push forward. Don't give up on yourself. And when you need, sometimes ask people for help. And when I say ask people for help, not in the sense of like financially, but if you need to talk to somebody, you need a close friend, you know, you know, go, go sit and have a, a soda, a glass of wine or something, you know, and walk on the beach, you know, clear your mind. You know, you have to continue to pour into yourself. I do what's called grounding work. I take my shoes off and I walk in the grass, man. I do that I every walk. single day. Every single day. Yeah, bro. Yeah, I do grounding work, man. So, um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, bro, I, man, I just like, I'll, I'll grab, I smoke cigars. I grab a cigar and I just walk around in my yard. And, or I'll lay in the grass and my neighbors will pass by. Right? All my neighbors are older. They'll pass by. They're like, are you okay? I'm like, yeah, I'm okay. I'm just laying in the grass and then you can be the middle of the day. They be looking Look, at me like, yeah, yeah. I do the same bro, I do yoga. It does something to me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, but yeah, man, I mean, we have a lot of similarities. I'm glad that you, we, we like kind of yeah. the earth too. So it's, it's yeah, nice you got to be, uh, man. Like, you, gotta, you know, you got to have that, that spiritual connection, man. So, so I do a lot in the, and I got these big trees in my yard. So I'll be under the tree laying in the grass, man. Just, just thinking, meditating, you know, um, being silent, you know, it's okay to be silent and hear your thoughts, you know, don't be afraid of your own thoughts. Um, and so, yeah, but anyway, so, but thank you so much, man, for having me. Uh, I go into that whole spiritual thing that I'm, you know, I'm in, man, but, um, but yeah, if you need anything, let me know. I appreciate you, brother. Thank you, Paul. I really appreciate it, man. Are uh, you taking your time uh, to interview me and being on your platform? Uh, you know, so I appreciate it. Yeah, you know, let's say connect. I have your number, like, uh, and we'll we'll yes, definitely uh, check something out. See if we can uh, can get to start developing some some communities and uh, exactly some things too, right? Uh, exactly. So, uh, I'm excited for that. That's why I do this. I I like to I call it like networking with authority. Yeah. Like, let me have yeah. you in my yep. show. Let me, you know, like uh, let's have a conversation that is valuable that we can record and then mm -hmm. let's give away for people to connect with us. And that's it. Right? Yeah. That, that's all it yeah, is. So. Thank you, Nick. Uh, it's been it's been a pleasure to have you here. And mm -hmm. uh, this was Nick Tinch and Fu, and this is us signing off. Peace. Thank you. Peace. Thanks for listening to Moments with Fu with your host, Fu. Please leave your feedback and visit strategicadvisorboard.com to get the latest and greatest business advisement on the planet. Follow us on social media for updates, and we will see you on the next episode.